Well, welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks and Adventures. You saw that last sign, I added Adventures to the name. Like I said, haven't done it officially yet. Don't know if I'm going to yet. We'll see. So as y'all know, we bought a little travel trailer last year, early last year, thinking we'd do some traveling. And COVID hit. And somebody just got a little sick. You know, anything. Oh, anyway, side note. If you're the crew here looking for some CNC work, I don't do any of this video, so if you want to bail now, I get it. I mean, I know that's what the channel is mainly about, and that's not what we're doing today. Today, we are going to turn a bunkhouse here in the trailer into a closet. I have a closet, or we've got a closet. I shouldn't say I. That's kind of self-serving, isn't it? There it is. I can get everything in there I need for a week, two days. I mean, but you see how I dress. I wear t-shirts, usually not this soaking wet, jeans or cargo shorts. I can put a lot of that in that little closet. So the theory here is, is we're going to turn the upper bunk into a closet. And when I say the upper bunk, we're underneath the upper bunk. I would just take the bunks out, but... We are looking to upgrade at some point, get to a bigger trailer. Not a huge one, just a little bit bigger. And I'll get deep into all that when I do the walkthrough of the trailer at some point. And I go through all the mods I've done to this trailer. So the mods I've made so far, like this one's going to be, are removable. So if somebody buys this thing, decides they don't want that to be a closet, they need it to be a bed, it's easily removable. That's what we're going to do today. And as you can tell... The intro came at the end of this mess because uh, I knew how hot it was going to be out here today. I actually got out here last night thought, thinking, hmm, I'll beat the heat. Yeah, no. It's in the high 80s with higher humidity and I went last night until it said uh, one of my cameras was overheating. Figured it was probably time to get out and just do the rest today. So we're going to turn a trader bunkhouse into a closet. So let's go. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is take my hanger and measure from the end to right here where these two pieces meet. Where this piece meets and this piece, right up here at this little peak. So I'm going to measure that to be eight and a half inches. So I want this out further, so I'm going to go ahead and call this 11 and a half inches. So I'm going to measure 11 and a half inches from the outside edge of the bunk in. That way I know that this is inset from the outside. I don't have to worry about walking by and catching, you know, jackets, anything that sticks out a little bit farther than normal. This way we know there'll be good separation and we don't have to worry about that conflict. So first thing I'm going to do is take this top mattress. I'm just going to tuck it back. I'm going to lift up this upper board which you may have to take a knife or a screwdriver or something to get up under it. I'm going to lift it up. And I'm going to put something just to hold it up to keep it off my hands. So you can see we have cross members here. So I'm going to measure the distance between. I'm going to call it 17 and 3 quarters inches. So what I'm going to do here in between these, these cross members that are 17 and 3 quarters inch apart, I'm going to cut me a piece of 2 before, lay it flat. It'll add more support for the upper bunk, and it'll give me something to screw through to the bottom, and I can have it good and sturdy.
Okay, so I've momentarily set it back down. We're going to go ahead and just remove the mattress. And toss it down here for a minute. So now I'm going to raise this back up. I want to mention, when you go to raise this up, you might check. There was actually four screws in the outer edges of these. Two up front, two in the back. And... Uh, I didn't know it until I started lifting. I was really struggling. I probably should have went ahead and showed that how much I struggled with it. So I'm just going to raise it up in my little support. I'm going to set it up on end like that to give me some space to work. Another thing, this one's 17 and 3 quarters. This distance between this upper uh, support and this middle support. The distance from this support and this support. 16 and a half so be sure and measure both of them that you're going to put wood in between simply because obviously they could be different so i'm going to measure from this outside of this board to the inside of this other strut that i have running up and down like this one across here so when i do that it's roughly two inches that way i know i can go nine and a half inches here and nine and a half inches here so now to secure these uh, braces that I put in here, I'm going to use these little angle braces. They look like that. They come in packs of four, so perfect. I can go on all four corners. It's probably a little overkill for just a little short rack like I'm putting in. I'm putting in a 36 inch rack. Uh, so yeah, it's a little too much, but it's something that when I put it in here, when we decide to trade up campers, We'll be able to leave that brace underneath there because the people that buy this next are either going to want to utilize the little rack for a closet or they're going to want to remove it because they intend on using the bunks. If that's the case, all they got to do is remove the actual bar that I'm putting in there. They can leave this upper strut up here. It's going to hurt nothing. Maybe it'll give a little bit of support to whoever's laying on the top bunk. And before I catch all kinds of flack, about not using a Craig tool to make nice little angled holes and running the screws in. I could. I've got one. However, I don't see the benefits of it here. We're not looking at holding that much weight and uh, something like this much faster. And the fact that we're going to do this onto one and a half inch pieces of wood, that's the framing of this bed. I'm not going to have to worry about any splitting because the screws are going to be quite a bit shorter. Oop, if I can hold on to them, they're going to be little bitty things. Okay, so now I've got my bracing in both these uh, in between both these slats. So I'm going to leave this propped up until after I've get my bar put up, just to make sure I'm hitting solid wood. Okay, so now I'm ready to put the bar up. So I've got two trains of thought here. I could measure from the outside in to 11 and a half inches, or I could run out to the shop and make a spacer that fits up against the inside of this lip here that's a half inch thick. 
that way I can just hold it up there, hold the bar up there, run a screw in it. So I think that's what I'll go do. Okay, so I've got my little spacer here. You see I've got a little notch, so I'll go around the corner because the bar actually reaches past the corner, which actually is going to present another problem for just a little bit. I'll just have to show you that one when I get there. Didn't expect this one. Uh, so I understand not everybody has the scrap lumber laying around like I do. So just use like a piece of cardboard if you got some cardboard. Just a little bit of anything. And honestly, you don't have to make it this long. This one's uh, 37 inches long, so it goes the full length of it. You can make you just one that's, you know, four or five inches wide. Make it to, uh, let's see, what did I do the math up to? Nine and a half inches. Let's see, it'd be 11, 10. No, 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 no. Yeah, nine and a half inches. You make it nine and a half inches long. And so you set it up against this lip. Run it up here. Puts the end of your bar up to it from right here. And it's an inch and a half to center of this. So that will give you your 11 inches. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to go ahead and screw my grab bar up. And when I say grab bar, this is a 36 inch grab bar, uh, like you'd put beside a toilet or maybe in the shower for somebody that needs assistance getting up. So you put it in and it's a real sturdy bar. So I mean, this is gonna hold a lot more weight than I need it to. So it came with two inch screws I am, however, going to use inch and a quarter screws simply because this is only going through a, a quarter inch piece of plywood up here in the bot or in the bottom, and then it's going to go through an inch and a half of two before. Well, so I mean it's going to be close, but there should be just a little nub of it sticking up, and I know there's a piece of quarter inch above it. It should never make it through that. And there's actually going to be two mattresses on top of this when I get done with this because I'm removing the bottom one and putting it on the top. It's just one of those safety things. I don't want to tear up the bottom of the mattress. I don't want anybody to jump up there and get stabbed in the back. So I'm going with inch and a quarter. It should hold plenty of weight because there's like, I don't know, 10 holes around this thing if I don't feel comfortable with it. Probably only going to use three, but you know, if you want to do overkill, you can do overkill. Okay, so I'm going to slide my little spacer in here. And then I'm taking my bar and I'm running it. There's a piece of uh, one inch tree up down here on the far end right there. So I'm running it all the way up against that. And on this other end, I'm just going to get it pretty close so I can get me a screw ran in here. Would have been nice if I went ahead and loaded a screw on this, but it didn't. So I'm going to run a screw in so it just holds it. Then I'll run down here. Well, maybe. This time I'm going to preload a screw. That way it's not quite as difficult to get going here. I'm going to lift my drill will set up. Okay. So I'm going to re-slide this in here. Put it under against the proper thing. And then run this up to the edge. And run a screw in this one. So like I said, I'm just going to run three screws into this. I'm not going to get carried away simply because I think three is going to be plenty. lock them in place okay so now we've got a good bar
Okay, so I've cut that piece down to 32 inches long and it was 30 inches high. However, I found a piece of half inch that was 29 and a half by 30 and I could cut it down to 32. The half inch isn't gonna bother me. It's not really gonna affect how I attach it or anything because all this is really doing is just blocking the area. So the next thing I'm gonna do before I put it up is I asked my wife what color she wanted it, being back up inside of her closet. She said black because it's dark in there anyway. Wouldn't be able to see it, so it would just block it off well. So that's what's next. So while I'm waiting on paint to dry, I figured I'd get this all closed up and uh, ready to work on the bottom. So like I said, I'm taking the bottom mattress and throwing it on top. Throw my top mattress in real quick. I got a double thick mattress up here, which will probably make it a lot more comfortable. Okay, so pro tip. Don't try to bring the door in the outside compartment. No matter how hard you try, it won't fit. And when you try to bring it in from the bunk, remember, you just put a pole up there and it hurts when you hit your head. So now what I'm going to do is basically just put these four brackets up. I brought a square so i can keep this as square as possible when i hook it up i am just going to go right here into this OB, uh, osb board on the bottom i'm going to try to hit the little support up top and like i said this isn't holding any weight so it doesn't have to be perfect Awesome. When you got to try to this size, more storage never hurts. Okay, there you can see the black wall. Now, this down here, don't worry about. My wife said she's going to cover it with a sheet. Black felt something. I don't know. She's going to make it look better, look better than I could. One thing you got to watch out for I hit this pretty hard with the board when I was putting it in, and now it won't lock up there. So I'll get some double sided tape and make that lock back up. But there it is. There's your quick and easy closet. So guys, that was it. Uh, went fairly smooth. <laughs> and when I mean fairly, at the very end of this thing, I'm gonna try to sort of include some bloopers, outtakes, whatever you wanna call them. I may have to quiet them at certain points because uh, this trailer may have been called other, th other things than wonderful. But anyway, all of what you saw there is not hard. Like I said before, I understand not everybody has just tons of scrap wood, pieces of two before they can cut up, plywood they can use for spacers. I understand. Uh, you can use just about anything for the spacer. Now the the extra support I do recommend it to before, but I mean you probably go with some half inch stuff, maybe three quarter inch plywood, little piece, because you're really not holding that much weight. If she's putting 100, 150 pounds of weight in a this little a closet for a trip you just need a bigger trailer so all the stuff I use the grab bar the little L brackets I'll put a link down below in the description there on Amazon and uh, <clears throat> y'all can see if it's what you want you can actually get a longer pipe I got a 36 inch turned out to be a little longer than I wanted because I had to angle that compartment which still not a big deal I've got plenty of room in my compartment. She has still has plenty of room on her uh, closet, on her pole or her closet. So great. The, uh, I think the next size up is 42 inches. So you can make that entire thing a closet, literally. You just might want to still close off that door. I mean, I don't understand why it opens from the outside to the inside. I wouldn't even put a little kid down there. Because you could jimmy one of those little doors with a pry bar and snatch a kid and be gone. I, that's just my take. I'm not dogging the trailer. So we love it. I mean, we love going camping. 
and right now this is great for us and it's what we can afford so like I said I'll leave the links to that stuff below my gosh if you can't tell sweat I'm sweating like mad this is actually a shirt that color Whew. getting hot so those of you that have kept messaging me and uh, asking questions about some of the other processes there on the CNC no worries I've got a uh, material prep coming I haven't even started on the airbrush video yet but uh, that one's actually going to turn in from not just cleaning your airbrush it's actually going to be all about the airbrush because I've had several here recently talking about wanting to know what I've got how good it is what paint I'm using all that stuff so I'll just jump off into the airbrush and all one video and I'm separating it from the material prep because uh, that video is already 15 minutes just I still not done with it who knew it took so long to make a video of that and the other big one that they keep hitting y'all keep hitting on is for me to redo the machine build I'm going to uh, don't look for that immediately because I'm still having to go back and look up sizes doing some measuring uh, putting some, writing me some notes so I know what else I want to say because there's some things I would do different I mean it's a great machine don't get me wrong but if I had to go back and do it again oh you bet I'd change some things we'd be doing a lot bigger projects if I could go back in time I'm happy with it so I'm not grumpy. so another thing I'll throw out there hopefully it doesn't happen in a rapid pace and we may or may not get it done we're actually thinking about moving so if that happens I'm probably gonna have a hiatus again at least on CNC I may if I do that I'll probably do a bunch of trailer stuff during that uh, we haven't even got it listed yet so this is in the future I mean it's down the road but property prices around here have gone through the roof and we have windmills those great big windmills going in on two sides of us and we just don't want to look at them we live out here in the country and our place is beautiful we just don't want to look at them not to mention like I said the property prices down here lost their minds I don't know what's up uh, they're through the roof that's why whenever we if we sell this thing I don't know where we're going because I don't know if we can afford to get land around here even to build and you sure don't want to build right now go price wood Whew. anyway heads up on that side note I'm also selling my truck but you can find that on Facebook at Brian McGill and or just go on to Facebook marketplace you'll see my 2010 one ton if you're interested I'm just looking at getting a more comfortable truck to pull the trailer because that thing's not comfortable if that's what you're looking for that one's a work truck so guys that's gonna be it if y'all hadn't done so yet please subscribe and if you hadn't done it run over there and click that notify button and that like button I've never said any of that other before but thought I'd throw it in one time so anyway guys that's gonna be all for today I'll see you next time this is we're gonna turn the upper bunk into a bunkhouse because uh oh my gosh so I'm going to measure 11 and a half inch or... I'll leave that brace underneath there and it'll hurt nothing because either it will it'll blah. because either the people that buy it are going to leave the little closet thing in place or they're going to want to remove that and oh, because either the, the people the son of a oh, so that will give you your 11 inches What we're going to do now is measure that up, go out and cut a piece. So, right here, about. Of course. That was a lot. Unfortunately, it still works. 
see if I can kick it over again and see if it works after that. Anyway, well that time I was banging the camera around. Awesome. 